Welcome to Ion Business Innovations, where we look at innovative people, innovative products, and innovative companies. And tonight we are very privileged to have with us Michael Sawitz. Michael, welcome to the show. Hey, Shan. Great to be here. Tell us a little bit about your background. Well, I'm in career number three. We okay. won't talk about the first two tonight, <laughs> okay. right? Those are uh, incognito. Well, it's a short show. Yeah, that's that's right. right. So, serial entrepreneur, okay. investor, mentor, okay. advisor. Um, now, you do a lot of this under the rubric of uh, fast. Fast start. Fast start. So, it's a fast start group. I have Fast okay. Start Studio, which okay. is an incubator. Fast Start Events, okay. which is uh, my community-facing okay. meetups. And now, Fast Start Talk. Okay. Now, you've Talk got a right lot now. of these things going, but um, what I've heard in the community is that some of what you do is very different than what others are doing in incubators and accelerators. Um, you know, it's boring doing what others do. <laughs> and us entrepreneurs, we find our own way. So okay. I, I created a, a new way to do it, a different way to do it. I'm okay. not saying who's right and who's wrong. I'm just doing mine differently. Well, for tonight, it's right. So, uh, Absolutely. So, so tell us the right way for tonight. For me, uh, it is about not just launching companies. My passion is about creating jobs. Okay. So in okay. order to do that, I lowered the bar. Okay. Lower the bar, making it easier for people to get involved. Okay. I don't take any equity. I don't charge them any money. Okay. They come. They're with us. We surround them with resources. Okay. And the output is what I'm looking for. Launching more companies that will hire people. Okay. Do business with local suppliers who hopefully all hire people. Okay. Everybody pays taxes in one startup at a time. We raise our own economy. So what was the inspiration for this? Uh, well, it's not the 60s anymore, so I can't, <laughs> I can't claim uh, that excuse. Um, I was successful in my businesses, yeah. and it was, it's time to give back. Okay. Uh, it started about seven years ago when I was still running my franchise company, and I needed help. And social media, you know what that is, that word social media? <laughs> well, seven years ago, uh, it was new to me. So who better to deal with social media, a 60-year-old or some 20-year-olds <laughs> at Cal State Fullerton? So that's where I went. And after that project was over, Professor Jackson asked me to stay on as a mentor. That changed my life. Okay. Yep, working with student teams, it was phenomenal. Okay. And for a guy who dropped out of college, that was the first time I walked onto a campus in over 40 years, and okay. it was pretty cool. Okay, so you've obviously translated a lot of your own experience into structuring uh, your incubator. So that that's the thing, you know, it takes it takes a lot of components. You know yep. that to have a successful operation, you know, one is obviously surround yourself with smart people. Yep. Yep give them processes and yeah. a procedure that works, and then get the hell out of the way. Well, sounds good. So if I was in your program, what would a typical day, week, month, or multi-month stint be like for me? Sure. Uh, we have foundational things. That's one of the things I'm passionate about, Shan, is everybody runs around trying to build their concept. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like, here it is and they have only eyes for that concept. <laughs> You're beautiful. <laughs> I love you. Together, we're going to do great things. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, they don't see the rest of the world. Yeah. So I call that um, a, a reality bubble or a distortion reality bubble. So I surround them with foundationally important pieces. Okay. Each one's going to be running a company, yet they don't think about what is leadership. Okay. So we talk okay. about leadership and okay. how to manage people and group dynamics and how to create culture. Of course, there's accounting, finance, marketing, yep. HR, and all yep. those other yep. things that they don't get in other places. And then bring really smart mentors and subject matter experts in to surround them for the okay. things that they need. Okay. So it's a two-prong approach. So tell us a little bit more about the leadership. So what are some of the components or steps in their learning of leadership skills? So we give them a choice and examples. Would you rather create a company of leader followers or leader leaders. Okay. And okay. the examples are pretty striking. Uh, just like you uh, might have heard about David uh, Marquette, who was running, took over the worst nuclear submarine in the United States uh, fleet, and in short time turned it around to become the best. So we had a dysfunctional team and the practices in empowering each of those individuals to do their job to the utmost for the right reasons this is the kind of thing we teach them, okay. create that culture. Okay. Now, I've also heard that you do some stuff with 
the younger end of the entrepreneur spectrum. Uh, can you tell yeah. us about that a little bit? So uh, that's fun. It started just trying to be a good grandpa, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And a TED Talk. Saw this TED Talk by guys at MIT who said, kids who learn to program at an early age tend to be better at math and better at problem solving okay. the rest of mm -hmm. their lives. So what can be better than to help your children and your grandchildren set the right dynamics for success? Okay. Okay. But I'm not a coder. Okay. But using this simple language that they created at MIT called Scratch, I taught myself how to make to program. Okay. Okay. So I built an animation of okay. kids, right, in the park, you know, the hat turned sideways. Yeah, yeah. What's up? What's up? Trying to get the lingo in it and you know, what are you doing? Well I wanna go I'm gonna go learn how to code. What's that? Hey, come with me and I'll show you. Okay. That kind of animation. Okay. Showed my grandkids and they were like, Uh huh. Yeah, and there was no breakthrough, and I'm going, oh, what did I do now? But I said, hey, would you like to learn how to make a cartoon? I didn't say animation yeah, okay. like that. Okay. Oh, we can make cartoons? Yeah, let oh, me show in, you. Huh? Okay. And that started. So I started with, uh, with Sadie at four and Braden at uh, uh, seven. And now there are 330 kids in the program. Oh, my God. Yes. Okay. We do it for free. Yeah. Uh, and now I bring in people that do know how to code, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and it's a lot of fun. So that's CoderDojoOC.com. CoderDojo. CoderDojoOC.com. <laughs> and from there, uh, between the college students and the elementary school, is high school, yeah, and yeah. that's where I spend a lot of time. Okay. Um, last Why high school? Because they're not totally screwed up yet. Okay. <laughs> okay. I can tell you after seven years with college students that uh, <laughs> it's not a pretty picture, right? And so I decided to, now he tells uh, me. <laughs> yeah, to move upstream a little bit and try to have some influence early on. Okay. And besides, there's a real problem going on, Shan, and you know, you're at Chapman and I know you see it. And that is that kids have this promise and we're breaking the promise to them. Our promise is you go to school, you work hard, and you get your higher education, and when you get, get out, there's going to be this job that will change your life. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to, to work in the field that you just got your degree. And now less than half of them yeah. are able yeah. to do that. So what about the other half? Yeah. Right? That's where entrepreneurship comes in. Okay. And so talking uh, to kids at high school, telling them, what startup land is about, what innovation is, and how to pursue their passions, and giving them the tools that if they aren't hired by uh, GE or GM, that they can start their own companies. Okay. Now, you talked about animation and a couple other ways you work with your, your clients and your students. You've got some sort of multimedia approach going here, too. Can you fill us in on the rest of your... Well, started a, uh, a talk radio okay. show okay. on octalkradio.net uh, that streams live on, on Fridays, but it's also a podcast and on iTunes. And it's about pulling the pieces together, Shan. Okay. Okay. So here in Orange County, we've got incredible resources. Four million people, 40,000 businesses, ground zero for the gaming industry, yep. for mm -hmm. med tech, a lot of other industries, yet they're working independently. So with octalkradio.net, it allowed me to create my show, okay. uh, being called, what else, but Fast Start Talk. <laughs> Fast Start Talk. <laughs> <laughs> and I bring in entrepreneurs and investors and suppliers, and we talk about what's going on okay. and lessons learned from people who are doing it. It's about sharing. So you've got a lot of insight into what's going on here in Orange County. Where do you see things going in the future here in the county? It's getting better, all okay. right? And I, I know you are uh, an investor and you work uh, in an angel group. I bring that up because it's all about the funding. You could build uh, the best doggone mousetrap, but if you don't have the, the liquidity, the assets to bring it to market, no one's going to know about it. So what's happening in Orange County is the, ma the money has come out from underneath yeah. the mattress. Okay. And okay. we're starting to see an increase in capital that's going into businesses. Okay. In fact, um, Tech Coast Angels, which I know you've got an affiliation, just published their numbers that they invested, I think, in 61 or 67 companies last year for just over $16 million. Yeah. That's up from before. Yeah. There's now uh, over 400 
uh, new uh, micro VCs. In fact, that's another thing that I'm involved with, with uh, a couple of friends. We're okay. building a $10 million early stage fund to use here in Orange County. Okay. So that's pretty doggone exciting. So if you were going to give some final words of advice to the entrepreneurs out there that may be watching, what would you, what would you tell them to do or not do? Don't go it alone, for one. <laughs> okay. uh, solopreneurs um, have a tough road, but at the same time, um, you don't put people on for people's sake. You have yeah, to, like yeah, I said, yeah. surround yourself with smart people, but people that share your vision, your passion. And together, you're using the right kind of procedures, and we believe that the lean startup strategy is the yeah. way to go, and to move quickly. Okay. And don't, not to worry about failing. Okay. We fail forward. Um, you put it together, you have a, a, a chance, let's call it. So let me give you one additional chance here. You've uh, told us about a lot of things, but is there anything I didn't ask you that you'd like to share with the audience? Well, the stuff I'm not going to share with anybody, <laughs> but about my wife after 43 <laughs> lovely years. Well, I wasn't years. going there. Yeah, I was just so thinking no. more about entrepreneurship. <laughs> I guess I guess the number one thing is the very first thing I did when I created um, Fast Art Studio is contracted or uh, with a young artist to do a piece that I put on the wall since at the studio because it is creative I have art all over the place okay. so the okay. the signature piece was uh, just the words start now okay that's okay. our mantra start now and, I, and he did it in an anime style so yeah, it's okay. pretty cool on the wall but every day I walk by that multiple times it is about having the the courage yep. to start now to pursue your passion well thank you for starting with us and continuing with us it's been a real pleasure thanks for coming on the show thank Michael. you Shan yep take care you have been watching eye on business innovations I'm Michael Sawitz, Fast Start Studios founder, and you're watching Eye on Business. Hi, I'm Brandon McNeil for Eye on Productions, and make sure and keep an eye out for the Ask Dino show, the innovation segment, and the new cutting edge Facets TV. To Facets Television. I'm Kevin McDonald, and as usual, we have some amazing people on our show. And today, we have Laura Herzog. Laura is actually the founder of Honoring Our Fallen, an organization that provides support post death for our military men and women. Um, thank you so much for coming in. Thank Laura. you for having me. I today. really appreciate it. So, um, I have a little bit of background on what you do, and I think it's pretty amazing. But let's start with how you got started with Honoring Our Fallen. Um, I had the honor of being a civilian public affairs officer, community relations specialist for um, the Joint Forces Training Base in Los Alamitos mm -hmm. um, for a period of two years um, on a government contract. And during that time, um, it, the short version of it is my life forever changed on the 10th of November 2009. On the 10th of November 2009, Lance Corporal Justin Swanson, 21 years old from Anaheim, was killed on the Marine Corps birthday. Um, in Helmand Province, Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And um, I was sitting in my office working on the General's Veterans Day speech and um, was told I needed to help with a hero mission. And I remember thinking, well, what's, what's that? What do you want mission? me to do? Mm -hmm. um, and just a few hours later, sitting in, in um, Mary Hargrove, Justin's mom's living room, after she had been told that he was not coming home, um, that that day and the subsequent days to follow and the the his body coming home and his funeral services um, that that changed my life and um, so after my two-year contract ended um, Justin lit the flame um, that has now become honoring our fallen so let me understand you basically were a private contractor you were doing this service that that we'll get into the specifics of what it is. So let me understand um, they cut your your role because of a budget cut correct? Yes, I, um, the position was a two-year government contract funded under the Global War on Terror federal mm -hmm. funding. Um, the person that had the position before me was a two-year contract, mine was a two-year contract. So then shortly thereafter you decided, okay, there's this need, there's no money, Ooh, I have to continue to do this? Is, that, is this where Honor Our Fallen came from? 
I don't know if that's quite it. What I remember is is knowing that um, I was there. Um, I believe that everything, you know, for everything there's a time and there's a season. And mm -hmm. I was supposed to be there for that two-year contract to, to learn exactly what I learned, mm -hmm. which is that I have found what I was called to do for the rest of my life. And that is, is to dedicate myself to serving the families of our fallen military, active duty death, those that don't come home, mm -hmm. and help those families. Um, I, I didn't lose a son, I didn't lose a father, I didn't lose anyone in the service, but I've walked a alongside hundreds of families that have, and to be able to bring them together and to help them and support them as they struggle to find that new normal. So, you know, it must be hard. I mean, I can only imagine, because I've, I've just seen the photographs and it's enough to cause me to get emotional. So. Um, it's an incredible thing you're doing. So can you kind of break it down for me? We, we lose uh, a soldier both. It could be civilian or it could be in theater. And then you get notification. Then what happens? What, did, what do you do at that point? Well, if, if we're contacted, when we're contacted, sometimes we're contacted by an extended member of the family themselves directly because mm -hmm. they now know of us and know our organization. Mm -hmm. um, many times it's by the casualty officer. Um, we support that casualty officer and assist them in supporting the family during that um, angel flight and the burial services and, and all those, those things that come, um, funeral, military honors. We, we provide support that's not military specific. Um, we just work alongside them to provide that extra added support on the, um, the outside. And, and when You're we, providing transportation in these types of things as well, aren't you? Sometimes, yes. It, every family is different and every family's need is different. Um, and so we just, um, we just stand by to stand by to support wherever the gaps are. Um, yeah. Sometimes they need this and sometimes they need that. And it's just a number of different things. I can use one example. We had a, um, a, a, an army soldier that the mother decided to have the funeral services in the park. Mm. And so we assisted with the renting of 300 chairs and having the chairs delivered to the park and the police explorers coming and helping us set up the chairs wow. and, and all of that stuff so that that funeral could be held um, at the park. So it's doing, doing the extra added things that nobody really thinks of as you're going through that process. Right. Um, when that's all said and done, there's many families that we serve that if we're not called upon to support during that that initial that burial um, we have um, a widow's retreat two of them annually mother's retreats mm -hmm. monthly events for the um, children of the fallen and a number of programs and services to now help them you're providing from what I understand like birthdays and gifts on, on the regular basis for these children who who may not benefit now and sort of not in a surrogate way because you can never be a surrogate but but an additional way to show that we care and that, that we're here and, and appreciate what their what their parent did for us. Well for me it's about um, the, the whole birthday and the Christmas thing didn't become about showing the kid that we were there and the kid that we cared. It was about helping the mom. Mm. Um, okay. That all came about it's an interesting that angle. all came about um, just before Christmas. I had a widow that lost her husband just before Christmas and I remember her saying to me Oh my God, Laura, you know, just hysterical. I'm not going to be able to go shopping. We used to do that together. We had our hot chocolate. We had our dinner. We shopped together. I can't do this alone. Yeah. And I remember thinking, well, then we need to, we need to figure out how we can do this. So the box goes to the mom. The box is received more a month before Christmas so that those gifts can be from That's whoever great. she, you know, she, right. and, and if it can be, maybe they're, the kid's having problems at school, maybe it's going to be a behavior reward, mm -hmm. maybe it's going to be, maybe the mom's struggling financially, and um, maybe she's going to use one of those gifts so that her son or daughter can go to a birthday party, and right. she doesn't have to go shopping to buy a gift for that birthday party. So for us, it's, the kid doesn't, the child doesn't need to know it's from us, because for me, you know, it, it's not about that, it's, it's yeah. about helping that mom, helping that, we have widowers, helping that that widow widower um in in um in again finding their new normal and, and trudging through the third year and those those other years are the hardest right right after the after you realize the reality and you have to deal with your new reality right right um so you're a full nonprofit. i mean you're fully nonprofit. i understand you're fully volunteer as well mm -hmm. um i saw this operation briefly when i helped move a few things mm -hmm. and i it was like incredible to see all of the stuff that you're doing. Um, how can other people help you? We're always looking for volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking for, um, we, have, we have a new, a great new fundraiser that we think is great. Um, 
you can donate $100 to Honoring Our Fallen as a tax-deductible donation. Mm -hmm. And um, with that, you get a ticket, a raffle ticket. I bought one. For a 2016 Volkswagen Jetta. Mm -hmm. And with that ticket, you have a one in a thousand chance of winning that Jetta. So here, you know, you have a chance, one in a thousand chance of winning a vehicle. And um, you're um, making a financial contribution to a 100% volunteer organization. And I was going to ask, um, what are the... What are the primary things that you need support for from from a current financial? I know you're you're always chasing money, but if you could say there were two things you want to do this year that you weren't able to do last year, what would they be? Well, we have um, well we have two things that are happening this year that we that didn't happen this this year or, okay. uh, that are excuse me. We have two things that are happening this year that did not happen last year. Okay. Um, our widows retreat grew so much last year that um, we had too many widows mm -hmm. so we've expanded that so we are having um, a second widows retreat so one in March and one in September we have a funder for the September retreat we do not have a funder for this mm -hmm. March retreat okay um, the second thing is is in um, the month of June um, I, I realized that you know here we're doing all this you know for the last three years almost four years I've been doing all this that we can for the moms and the the, the dads and the, the children and the you know the widows what are we doing for the brothers and sisters? That's a good question. And so this year, um, we are going to hold our first siblings retreat, where we're going to take the brothers and the sisters of the fallen and take them away and let them connect with other siblings. You know, so many of them will say to me, Laura, you know, you know, on the side, and I would never tell you who it is that says no, it, but they hope, say, yeah. you know, what about me? Mm -hmm. You know, my, you know, I'm never going to live up to the to the hero that my my sibling was. I'm right. never going to, you know, how am I going to ever like hold that that clout in my family? And you know, what about me over here? I'm sad too. Um, and so we want to do something to help um, bond them with other siblings that that can mentor each other and be there for each other. And, and without so, having to ask, I mean, that's kind of great that you're the one reaching out now and saying, here we are. You don't have to come ask, right. even though they have every right to ask. Families are affected much like spouses are. Right. And and so so what we want to do is um, we we do not we're going to do it, but we do um, we are looking for funding for that siblings retreat in um, not not just federal not federal not just funding for the retreat. We we accept no federal funding. Um, but but whether it be in kind, I mean, there's got to be someone out there that has you know things that they can donate that are in kind. Not everybody right. can give money, but um, we look for time. We look for in kind donations, and um, you know we look for um, you know obviously funding as well. And having done these type of charity work over the years, I do understand those in kinds and those that time is often just as important um, Absolutely. you know even if you have the money if you don't have people to help you coordinate and put things together and transport and do all those other things then the money doesn't mean a whole lot because you can't get to the end of the program right absolutely yeah so you how long have you been doing this now I'm honoring our fallen um, my last day of federal employment was the 28th of January 2011 our logo was built and our website was built on the 6th of February um, 2011, and we became a nonprofit 501c3 officially on the 27th of April 2011. So that's pretty amazing because I happen to know you're uncompensated at this point. You're doing this as a volunteer too, is that true? Absolutely. That's yes. it's incredible that you do that. And those that are out there um, think that just a little bit that you might be able to do to help her. Look how much she's doing for us. I mean, and for the families of, of our fallen. So. Um, I want you to have an opportunity to invite folks to contact you. Can you look at the camera to my left? and Please visit our website, www.honoringourfallen.org, for further information about us, learn a little bit more about who we are and what we do. You can reach me via cell phone at area code 714-904-0253 or via email, laura, L-A-U-R-A, at honoringourfallen.org. I'm Kevin McDonald. You've been watching Facets Television, and with us tonight has been one of our heroes, the founder and CEO of Honoring Our Fallen, Laura Herzog. Thank you for watching. We hope you'll come back.